Good morning, everyone. This is Cassie Stumo. I am the marketing specialist here at EAC. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. We'll start off today with an intro of EAC, and then our technical account manager, uh, Paul Dye, will be taking um, us through MathCAD 6.0 updates. Um, there is a short survey that pops up after the webinar ends, so please take a moment to answer these um, questions. Everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, and then also, if you have questions along the way, um, just put them in the chat. So first off, I will tell you a little bit about who we are at EAC. Our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Um, we're not only a value-added reseller for PTC, but we are the number one solutions provider um, for PTC in the country with experts in 22 areas of product development. Uh, we're located all over the U.S. with our headquarters um, in Minneapolis. Uh, we offer our customers everything they need for product development from CAD and simulation software for the full product design process with Creo and Ansys, software for managing service documentation such as ArborText, Vuforia Studio, and Creo Illustrate, and software for managing product data uh, such as Windchill, ThingWorks Navigate, and our EAC productivity apps. We assist with design and engineering projects and offer webinars and PTC certified training courses for continuous learning. We also implement the industrial internet of things and augmented reality into business strategies uh, to help jumpstart initiatives around digital transformation and connecting all things in your company. Uh, we are also a commercial reseller for Form Labs. Um, we offer the Form 3 the Form 3B and the Form 3L uh, desktop SLA printers um, with packages starting as low as uh, $3,499. Um, so really EAC is just the company you need to partner with to get all of the technology that you need at the forefront to make your team successful so you can continue to do the things that you do best. Um, I'll go ahead and hand things over to Paul so he can get started. Hey, thank you very much, Cassie. And again, my name is Paul Dye. I'm an application engineer with PTC, focusing in on our Creo products and even in with MathCAD Prime. So that's really what I'm here to talk to you today is a little bit about MathCAD Prime in and of itself and what we have new with uh, Prime 6.0. So to give us a little bit of context, I want to take a look into some of the challenges that we often see out in the industry today around what we see with uh, documentation and really working with that design process and we'll go through our solution with MathCAD Prime specifically 6.0 and then we'll go over and discuss some of the capabilities we have with MathCAD do a brief demonstration that we have prepared and then we'll talk about how we can really move forward with this tool so looking into some of the challenges that we often see out in the industry today it can really oftentimes be very difficult to capture, share, even try to reuse our design intent. Many of our engineering calculations that we do are created using data from maybe multiple different systems or arcane languages. And it's really all compounded by poor communication and that leads to a loss of knowledge. What we also see is a loss of traceability. And that's between our initial market requirements that we start with and then we have our final designs. And along that path, there could be some errors that might need to be fixed. And any lack of documentation is going to lead to inefficiencies in that process. It's really going to cause delays. There's a big issue with trying to standardize the processes or the tools that we work with on a daily basis. So problems can be introduced due to design intent being stored in multiple different locations. And it really leads to process inefficiencies and product delays. And many times design calculations have to be started from scratch whenever you're working with new or different design iterations or new product developments. And that's because our engineering calculations are, in general, pretty much unmanaged and uncontrollable. And if we don't have our processes, our processes standardized from the start, and there's likely going to be a lack of early design validation, and that could again lead to rework. So, is your design optimized? Is it the best trade-off for cost, strength, time to market, customer requirements? And again, many times that we see these mathematical errors, they're really either caught too late in the design. Uh, leading to costly rework or sometimes missed entirely. That can lead to increased aftermarket services or costly recalls, which is definitely something we want to avoid. 
And we really want to fix that. And the way that we're going about it is with MathCAD Prime. So this process is really made up of analyzing, solving, documenting, and sharing. So at its base, MathCAD is a digital engineering notebook to perform calculations and manage your design intent. So this picture here really shows it. It's a document with calculations, notes, charts. It's all very visual. What it's not is a bunch of code, where it's something you have to go through and look through a computer program to sort through to try and understand. And that's not to say that MathCAD at its core doesn't have a very powerful engine, but you as the user, we're not going to have to see all of that or try to work with it. We just work in a neat and robust environment, and we let the documentation do that work behind the scenes. All right, so some of our tools and capabilities around when we're working with MathCAD, we start with what's called a whiteboard interface. So this is where we snap all of our work onto, and the default is this nice grid style paper that we're used to seeing in something like our engineering notebooks. And it also does out calculations for us. So whatever equations that we lay out, provided that we give the necessary values, it's gonna go through and automatically give us the answers with us having no need to code out a single thing. So this document has everything built into it from live math, text, graphics, and even call up other programs, which we'll see a little bit later on. And so this isn't all for calculations. Remember that we do all of this to also display the design process in an easy to understand manner. A very useful feature in MathCAD is the ability to manage units. So say you add nine inches plus two feet times eight furlongs, or it understands each of these and then it outputs into whatever units that we need. And one of the big things to note here is that everything is self-documented. So do all these calculations, do these equations, do everything you need to do. But once you're done, we have all that documentation right there and MathCAD really simplifies this process. And this process in general is very WYSIWYG. So really what you see is what you get. So it's not different formats for printing and whatnot, it's just a page. And we also have a huge function library with math notation, solvers, data analysis, statistics, Fourier transforms, all these things that maybe we studied and might have some knowledge on, but luckily MathCAD can do much of those out for us. We have many different plot options from just simple XY plots to polar coordinates, contour plots, it's all right there. And one other thing is that these are all live plots. So using whatever data is on the page, we can change things around and the plots are gonna update for us. So here in the context of what we're working with here, moving forward with MathCAD Prime 6.0, we've enhanced your ability around documentation. So we've done this by giving users the ability to create their own custom margin settings, or whatever your purpose happens to need. And this also includes full control over the header and footer options as well. And productivity was another area that was the focus with MathCAD Prime 6.0. The ability to spell check has been improved, including the ability to change the proofing language to whatever happens to be necessary at that time. We also now have the ability to provide hyperlinks in our calculations and our documentation. So if we wanted to link to a website for a part of our description, well, we now have the ability with Prime 6.0. And working around usability, we've worked to improve our ability to find and replace elements within our document. So we've also expanded our options around printing off our calculations, including the API method to save as or different file types. And here around the chart application, we can now take our plots and zoom in to really focus in on certain areas to like what we want to focus on. Rather than having to exclude any extraneous information or include that, we really have the options there. And once we finish our plots, we now have the option to save this off as an image file if we so choose to do so. All right. And so now what I'd like to do is move into a quick demonstration so we can see what working with MathCAD Prime 6.0 looks like in that general process. here pulling up MathCAD Prime and let's go through and work with a document that we have here. So here we're working with the design for a piston that we're working on and our goal is to maximize the ratio between volume and surface area in order to increase the efficiency of this engine. So here we have that equation that defines this relationship so let's highlight that equation to make sure that it's emphasized. We also have a description of the equation that we can attach to the right so anyone who looks at that highlighted term can then see that this relationship 
actually helps to minimize heat and pressure loss during the process of combustion. And next, we can move on to defining some of the constants that we can use throughout our study, including displacement and compression ratio. So for these values, like I mentioned earlier, we'll give them units to really keep our calculations straight throughout the process. And then of course, for those ratios, we aren't going to have any associated units. Next, we can define the values that we'll be needing to use. And this can really be anything. In our case, we have our bore diameter, the head edge thickness, number of cylinders, whatever you want to type in there. Again, for all those units, type in the, uh, for all those values, type in the units, and we can just simply have the system figure them out for us in our calculations. And after that, we'll define the functions to calculate the volume and the surface area for the spherical cat. So these functions reference the diagram on the right. And in MathCAD, these functions can utilize the variables that we laid out. So in this case, we can see that both the volume and the surface area of the spherical cap utilize both the height and diameter that we can draw from the diagram. And the next thing that we'll do is define the requirements or the constraints for our study. These design requirements are important because we want to maximize the ratio of volume to surface area, but we also have additional considerations that we have to adhere to, such as the height of the piston, uh, the piston head, and also the engine block. So these are just things that we have to be mindful of going forward with our calculations. And then before we can go and do the optimization, we first need to define our functions in order to calculate the things that we care about. So we care about volume, the surface area, and most importantly, we care about the ratio. So that's because the ratio is actually what we want to do the optimization on. So these are all functions that define the volume and the surface area for the different components of our design, including again, that piston head and the engine block. And we can also see here that we're utilizing all those variables and constants that we defined earlier in the document. Right. And then in yellow here, we have the master function. It takes everything that we built so far and then calculates the overall ratio uh, volume to surface area. We want to maximize the output of this function and solve for the height of the piston head and also the height of the engine block. Right. The next section I'd like to hit on here are the characteristic curves for both the volume and the surface area. So these curves are going to be utilizing the equations that we went through and defined above. And that is, again, the volume of both the piston head and the engine block, along with the surface area for both the piston head and engine block as well. And because at the start, we went through and defined all those variables with both values and units. We're now able to take all that data that the system automatically went through and solved out for us. And we can start to gain a little bit of insight here. And so here now we can see one of our collapsible areas. And that's essentially just hiding the plot information that we have being solved out. So we have the ability to leave this hidden to start to avoid clogging up any of the visual space for someone that might just be scanning through the document. So opening this section up, we can now very visually see the relationship between some of the variables or the functions that we went through and defined. So for example, as the height of the engine block is changing, what effect does that have on the volume and surface area? And again, we have all those different units defined for the values in our plots. Once we have the information that we need, we then have the option to collapse that region and again, have it hidden from sight. Um, in my case, I see this as some pretty vital information, so I'll keep that being displayed for now. And we have another collapsible region here down below for the optimization that we're gonna be going through. So maybe these are some pretty important calculations that I'm working with, and I don't want just anyone being able to access this info. Um, I can choose to have this area password protected, and this really helps to ensure that my intellectual property is secure. And we also have the option to have these regions locked as well. So either having them be locked closed until a password is provided, or we can have it locked open to ensure that this information is being properly displayed. So now I don't have to worry about some random designer on my team coming in and making changes to the values or the equations that we're worried about. And I can rest assured that my optimization is being performed exactly as I intended it to be. And once we go through that optimization, we can see that the optimal height for the piston head is right around one millimeter, and the optimal height of the engine block settles out right around 43.75 millimeters. And then next, we have another collapsible region that contains some of our calculations around our requirements verification. So here we can verify that our solution has met our requirements by taking a look at the values such as compression ratio and the engine displacement. We can check that against our requirements, and once we're finished, we simply close that back up or leave it open to display that information by default. And then finally, we can present our results here in a tabular format using an Excel component. 
And so all we need to do is just with a simple click, we can actually access that element right in Excel and make any changes that we need to. And then once we're done, we just simply save it off, close out, and then we can see the updated results right back here in MathCAD. So that all is a really good overview of the process that we go through in working with MathCAD, starting from defining some of our constants and variables and doing the calculations, both numeric and symbolic, and then putting it into a form that's very visual and provides us with some great insight. Right. Now what I'd like to do is touch on some of the improvements that we've made in MathCAD Prime 6.0, primarily around productivity. And the first feature I'd like to demonstrate is our ability to create hyperlinks and then go through and attach them to our components. So in our case here, if I want to create a reference for calculating the compression ratio like we did in our calculations, I can first create a text block and then go to our source and grab the URL for where the information is being presented, and we can bring that right into MathCAD. And for our link, we can give that some reference as well. So let's go ahead and give it a name related to the calculation of our compression ratio. Now that we have our reference title, we just simply highlight it, add in the link, and paste the URL from our source material. So now if we want to give the person reading or working with the document the option to get some additional information on how we got these equations that we used in our calculations, we now have the ability to do that. And here the next productivity improvement in MathCAD Prime 6.0 that I'd like to quickly demonstrate is our spell check feature. So for example, if we try to type out the word reference, but we added an extra E at the end, and it gives us that red line underneath, and we have options there. So our first option then is to have the ability to add that to our working dictionary. So if that's a word that we use often in our documents, we can add that into the dictionary, and we're not going to have that problem moving forward. Of course, the spell check works exactly how you think it would, so it would give suggestions based on the word that's misspelled. And then finally, we do have different proofing languages now that we're able to work with and utilize for whatever our need happens to be. All right, so again, that's a quick look through what we're working with and really seeing that process of utilizing MathCAD Prime 6.0. And so moving forward with this, we really see a lot of ability to really now fully optimize our designs as we can go through and reference every part of the design process and ensure that each step that we took was done in the best way. And overall, we're improving the quality of our designs. So there's no error slipping through the cracks because we truly understand each variable that we're using. We're also reducing the time to market by eliminating unnecessary errors along the way and maximizing our engineering productivity and the efficiency at which we can work. And MathCAD Prime 6.0 also eliminates or at the very least reduces the need to re-engineer critical values when moving forward with the next generation of your products. We're also able to reduce our overall development costs uh, by not only avoiding errors and rework at our calculations, but also by more effectively sharing and collaborating with colleagues and teams in a format or a form that everyone can truly understand. And so that's all I have to go over and show us for today and what we're working with with MathCAD Prime 6.0. I'll pass it back off to Cassie to see how we can move forward or if there's any other questions that I can answer towards the end. Thank you, Paul, for presenting today on MathCAD 6.0. Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the queue, but if you guys have questions, please reach out. Um, I'll be sending the recording of the session in a follow-up email. Um, and then just a reminder to answer the survey questions that will pop up once we shut down the webinar.